So we've gone ahead and have drawn a picture to represent the motion of these two beetles, but let's just pause and make sure that this makes sense. We can start out with beetle number one, which we've colored in green. First, that beetle runs 0.5 meters due east, so we've started at an origin and we've drawn a vector going 0.5 meters due east, and then that beetle travels 0.8 meters at 30 degrees north of due east. So we've drawn that second vector right here, and then that beetle stops. We look at the other beetle, which we've colored in blue, and the first motion is 1.6 meters at 40 degrees east of due north. So that would be this vector right here. And then there's a, another motion of the second beetle. We don't know this vector. We're actually trying to figure that out. But what we do know is that that beetle ends up in the same position as the first beetle. So perhaps we can put a little blue dot there to represent that they have arrived at the same spot. Now, what we're going to do is go back to beetle number one in green, and we're going to summarize its motion in a little chart. So let's set up that chart right now. So in this chart, we have the two distances traveled, the 0.5 meters and the 0.8 meters, and what we're going to do is break those into their x and y components. Now, recall that for an x component, what you're going to do is multiply that distance by the cosine of an angle. We'll talk about that angle in just a moment. And then for the y component, you multiply the distance by the sine of an angle. Let's look at that first vector, this one right here. And to figure out the angle, you want to ask yourself, well, how many degrees from the positive x-axis is that vector pointing? How many degrees from the positive x-axis is that vector pointing? And of course, that vector is actually pointing along the positive x-axis, so the angle is zero degrees. And so we would have 0.5 meters times the cosine of zero degrees. That's going to give us the x component. And then we'll have 0.5 meters multiplied by the sine of zero degrees. And that's going to give us the y component. Let's look at the next vector, the 0.8 meter in length vector, and take a look at the angle. You'll see that it's measured 30 degrees from the positive x-axis. So that will be our angle for that vector. So you would just do 0.8 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees to get the x component, and then 0.8 meters times the sine of 30 degrees to get the y component. And then what you would like to do here is you would like to find the total x and y components. So we might just call this the resultant. And then you'd pick up a calculator and let's add these two components together. And for the x component, you should get approximately 1.193. And then when you add the two y components together, you should get exactly 0.4. Now these are in meters. This is the resultant vector of beetle one's motion. So what we're gonna do is just sort of box this in and come back to it momentarily, we would like to look at beetle 2's motion next in a chart. Now for beetle 2, we know that the distance it traveled on the first part of its journey was that 1.6 meters, but what we do not know is the distance it traveled for the second part of its journey, so that vector's distance right there. We don't have that, so what we've done for now is just have called that d to represent that distance. Now remember, for the x component, we're going to multiply by the cosine of an angle. For the y, we'll end up with the sine of an angle. Take a look at the first vector, this one here. you got to be a little bit careful. Some people would think that the angle is automatically 40 degrees. But when you're measuring your angle, you do want to make sure that you're measuring from the positive x-axis. So the positive x-axis is right here, of course. What you're looking for is actually that angle right there. That's going to be the angle for the first part of beetle 2's motion. Well, we know the 40 degree angle, and we also know that the y and x axis form a 90 degree angle. So that angle right there in red has to be 50 degrees. So you'd want to make sure you use 50 degrees for this angle. So you're going to have 1.6 meters times the cosine of 50 degrees. And then for the y component, you're going to have 1.6 meters times the sine of 50 degrees. Now, for the second part of the journey, this is pretty tricky, isn't it? Because if you look at that second vector right here, we don't have the distance, and we also don't have the angle. The angle would be this angle right here. We don't know what that is. And therefore, when we fill in our chart, the best that we could probably do here, since we're calling this d, is we can call the x component d times the cosine of that unknown angle, and then the y component is d times the sine of that unknown angle. Pretty unsatisfactory at this point, but we will end up figuring out the d and the theta in a moment.
For now, we can do the resultant just like before. Pick up your calculator and do 1.6 times the cosine of 50, and it's about 1.03. So that means when you add these components together, you're going to get 1.03 plus d cosine theta. And then for the y component, let's figure out 1.6 times the sine of 50 degrees, and you get about 1.226. So then when we add those together, we'll get 1.226 plus d sine theta. Okay, now, what else do we know? Well, we know that the beetles end up in the same positions. So that means that the x component of that final position is going to equal the x component of the final position of the other beetle. In other words, they're traveling in total by the same x distance. And the same thing is true for the y components. So the final y component of beetle 2 will equal the final y component of beetle 1. So we're going to set those components equal to each other. And let's go ahead and set that up right now. Okay, great. Now, once again, just make sure you understand what we're doing. We're taking the final y component of the second beetle and setting that equal to the final y component of the first beetle, because again, they end up in the same position. And then we did the same thing for the x component of that second beetle, set that equal to the x component of the first beetle. Now, we have a system of two equations with two unknowns. We have d and theta as our unknowns, and we're going to solve this. And there's a couple ways we could do it, but one way would be to do a little bit of an algebraic trick here. So for example, let's subtract the 1.226 from both sides of this equation, and then let's also subtract the 1.03 from both sides of that equation. We'll generate two new equations. There we go. And now you might ask, well, why did we do that? Because there's a neat thing that can happen here. If we divide these two equations, then what happens is the d's would cancel. d divided by d is just 1. And then check this out. Sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, you probably know, is equal to tangent of theta. That's just a nice trig identity. And then when you divide the negative point 826 by the point 163, you will get about negative 5.067. And this is lovely because now we can solve for the angle. Recall that to solve for the angle, you would do the inverse tangent of both sides of this equation. The inverse tangent and the tangent would cancel, and now you have theta is equal to the inverse tangent of negative 5.067. When you punch that into your calculator, you will find that the angle is about negative 78.8 degrees. Now, the fact that it's negative should make some sense. Let's go back to the picture and look at beetle 2's motion. Look at the second vector for beetle 2 right here. There is that angle. Notice that it's directed below this positive x-axis right here. And the fact that it's directed below the positive x-axis should mean that the angle is negative. Remember that when you measure angles in a clockwise direction, that they are negative. So this negative result makes a lot of sense. You could leave it as that. You might also change it into that sort of north and south and west notation. So we could say that the answer is 78.8 degrees, and it would be south of due east. That way we use that sort of navigational lingo. So this would be correct for the angle. Could also represent it more kind of arithmetically like that. So there are the angles, or there is the angle, and now we just want to find d, which was the sort of distance or the magnitude of that second vector. We can select either one of these equations and it's going to serve us well. So let's check out this equation. Let's recopy it down below. Okay, excellent. And then let's plug in the angle that we discovered earlier. That was that negative 78.8 degrees. Let's pick up our calculators and do the cosine of that angle. You should get about 0.194. So now you have D times 0.194 is equal to the 0 0.163. And then divide both sides of this equation by the 0 0.194. You can get it to cancel on the left side. And then your final answer for the magnitude of the displacement of that second vector is 0 0.84, and that would be in meters. So this was the correct answer to part A. We actually solved them in reverse, and then the angle for part B was right here. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate your taking the time to watch regardless.